like this. <laughs> Cole, Cole, hopefully, will be a voice of reason here. Cole, what's up, my man? Hey, how you guys doing? I'm just going over my daily Texas A&M. We what have they done? Up. Why are they in the uh, way too early top 25 at number 11 next year? My typical stuff. 11 seems like a bit of a stretch. Uh, the only thing that I'll say is this. After you get past, let's say, let's say you can come up with your top five for next year, which I actually think is even kind of tough. But get to your top five and then start telling me how confident you are in six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Because I feel like there's three or four teams that I feel pretty good about being towards the top of the rankings next year. And then there's going to be a couple of log jams at tier two, tier three, and tier four that I just don't know anything about. And we still have another, what, 24 plus hours that kids can leave early. So, like, how big of a difference is Caleb on Chase Song going to make? How Thank big of you. a difference is Travis ATN going to make at Clemson? So, I mean, there's there are a couple guys still left that, and not to mention we got a whole offseason of the portal. So, we really don't even know um, how things are going to look. So, it's kind of tough, especially after you get past – we got Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, and then – I mean, it's kind of like, and then who? And then what? A&M's offense is going to be really good next year. Really good next year. But they lose a lot on defense. <laughs> matabike has gone. Clemens is gone. You lose a couple guys in that secondary. So, yeah. I think they can be scary. Do I think they're a top-10 team? No, probably not. Cole is the voice of reason. Hey, let's move on to a team we do know about. And, of course, Cole Kubik is our guest here on Hanging with Hester. Let's talk about the 2019 LSU Tigers. They just won the national championship. So many things we could point to to make the case for them maybe being the greatest college football team that we've ever seen. Cole, I know you've talked about it on Twitter. You've made some great points. Do you, in fact, believe this is the best college football team we've seen? I do. I I think they are. And here's a couple things that we lose sight of. Number one, team. People immediately get away from that word. That's frustrating for me. I'm not talking about greatest collection of talent. And to make a great team, you need role players. You need guys who understand what their role is on a team. You need situational guys. And by the way, the best thing you can accomplish as a team is to defeat other great teams. And LSU this year did more of that than any team in college football history. Could you go to 0304 Southern Cal and say, maybe they have more talent? It's possible. Could you go to 01, my, which, by the way, I think 2000 Miami is better than 2001 Miami. And they lost the game. So, okay, whatever. But could you go to 01 Miami and say, well, they have more first-round draft picks or more draft picks? You could. But a lot of people that look at that 01 Miami team, they're talking about Vince Wilfork, who was a freshman. They're talking about Sean Taylor, who was – Sean Taylor was not playing in front of Ed Reed. Now, Ed Reed was amazing. So, are, are we going to wait to see – are we going to wait four years to judge this LSU team to see what John Emery does? Are, are we, are we going to wait a couple of years to see what Derek Stingley turns into? I, I think we know now, but my point being, are we going to have to wait to judge this LSU team based on what – some of the freshmen and sophomores who barely play do three or four years from now, because that's how some people are judging some of these other teams that they're telling me are better than this LSU team. My standard has been 95 Nebraska for the majority of my adult life. Go look at that 95 Nebraska defense. Now you'll see Grant Winstrom, who was great. You'll see the Peter brothers who were great inside, but you tell me who in the hell is going to cover these LSU (laughs) wide receivers. Like, they didn't have those guys. There's no way 95 Nebraska's covering LSU 2019. It's not happening. So all you can do, in my opinion, is take the resume and then you judge that team by that. And if you're talking about seven top 25 teams at the end of the top 25, the top four teams going in, the seven top tens they beat while they were ranked when they played them, However you want to spin it, you can't get around it. The ACC champion, the Big 12 champion, the SEC East champion, the the Sugar Bowl winner, the Orange Bowl winner, the Fiesta Bowl winner, the Texas Bowl winner, the Alamo Bowl winner. I mean, come on. It's not debatable. This team just ran through the most difficult gauntlet 
that any undefeated national champion ever has, and most likely any national champion ever has. Therefore, in my opinion, that makes them the greatest team college football has ever seen. And I 100% agree with everything you just said. To go through a season like they did, unblemished, undefeated, and I talked to you yesterday, to not have to have a two-minute situation on offense and defense where you had to go win the game or not lose the game, that's even more remarkable in the way that they beat these teams. So I'm right there with you, Cole. But now, as we know, what comes next is guys going to leave early. They realize the special season they just had. Your coordinators, probably going to get plucked. Joe Brady, already in Carolina. Dave Aranda, very, very closely tied to this Baylor job. It's coming out he's the lead candidate. If you're LSU, what do you do? What do you do as far as your coordinator moves if, in fact, Dave Aranda does leave? Do you see them going after a big name? Do you replace Joe Brady as a passing game coordinator, a title that was made up for him? I think you definitely bring in another passing game coordinator. And I think the first thing that you do is you take a step back, you take a deep breath, and you trust the man that you have put in charge. Because if there's one thing that I have learned about Ed Orgeron in the last two, three years, and if there's one thing about Ed Orgeron that for some reason people just completely excuse and completely attempt to give him credit for, it's that Ed Orgeron is a great judge of humans. I think he's a great evaluator of humans. You know, just like I know, that he knew he made a mistake on a previous offensive coordinator way before LSU fans knew he made a mistake on that. And I think that if we go back 365 days ago, when Joe Burrow was handed that new playbook, that was brand new, that changed everything for LSU football. How many of us just were looking at Twitter and said, oh, LSU hired some uh, analyst or graduate assistant or uh, coffee runner from the Saints? Good for them. Great. It ain't going to change anything. How many people blinked when they saw Joe Brady was coming to LSU? Not one. Not a single one. That changed no one's opinion of what LSU football was going to be. But Ed Ordron's the one that went and got him. Ed Ordron's the one that hired Steve Insminger, and people laughed. Ed Ordron's the one that went and got Pete Jiggins a couple of years ago. I know he's not still there now. Ed Ordron's the one that went and got John Robinson, who comes in there and acts as a sounding board for him every single day. Ed Ordron has I don't I, I want the magic potion that Ed Ordron is drinking that has made his ego completely disappear. Where can I find that? Great point. Because I, I need that in my life. I want that in my life because he's done it. I was sitting up there with Van Pell doing Sports Center, and he begged him. He begged Ed Ordron to tell him how and why he would celebrate this national championship. And Coach O wouldn't do it. He just said, hey, we got great people. We got great coaches. We got great fans. We got great players. They all had a hand in this. Everybody in the state of Louisiana had a hand in this. Everybody who played here before had a hand in this. Like, he wouldn't take credit. None of it. So, I think he's a guy that understands how to find good people, how to put good people in position to help his team, and he'll continue to do that. You don't think after three or four – well, not three or four, because I think we still didn't really know until about five, six games into the season that it was going to be next level on offense – you don't think right then there were days when he came in and said, all right, we better figure out who's going to be the next guy because this dude's not going to be around long. Like, he's that good. He knew he was that good. He's known he's that good. Maybe they thought they were going to keep him. Maybe they didn't. And the good thing about Ed Orgeron, I don't think he's got to shop at Neiman Marcus. I don't think he needs to shop at Nordstrom or Tiffany. Like, I think he'd be fine going and shopping at Target or Walmart. Like, if he can find a bargain that's the right guy, that's the right fit, I think he'll go get that, and he'll go shop there, and he'll make his purchase there. Because, again, what I just said a minute ago, whatever that ego eraser juice that he's been drinking, that allows him to do that. He doesn't – he tried – Matt Canada was the hot name. That may be the most important lesson that Ed Ordron has learned since he's been at LSU. Because he didn't know Matt Canada. They weren't buddies. They didn't go back. They didn't coach at USD together. He didn't grow up in, in southeastern Louisiana with him. Like, he went and got him because of his name recognition and his name value, and he wanted to beat other people to him. And I think he learned a lesson from that. I think the lesson was, 
that might not be the right fit. That might not be the right personality. That might not be the right guy to be around me and my team to make them better. And that's what he's going to go get are the right guys to help make his team better. Cole, it's an outstanding point. Matt Canada, he's hired. It only lasts a year. So many coaches would have forced that to try and work three, four seasons to prove I hired the right guy. I think it is the biggest thing that happened because he said, you know what? And he takes blame for it. He says, hey, that was on me. I rushed that. I didn't do my due diligence, and I didn't do this, that, and the other. And for him to be able to admit that in this day and age in in the coaching profession is almost just completely unheard of. And so I agree with you. That's why you have to trust him in these hires. Hey, real quick, last thought here, and I know you got to go. Seven guys leave for uh, the NFL draft. You got two more who are possibilities in Caleb Vaughn and Thaddeus Moss. Is that something that you know is worrisome because LSU leads the country since 2012 as far as guys leaving early? I assume LSU's coaching staff knew probably seven of these guys were for sure guys going to forego their senior season. Yeah, I think they knew that a lot of them were going to go. I think you had an idea on some of the other ones. Um, and I also think that anytime you win a national championship, that everyone's view of themselves is probably going to be a little bit inflated. And that's okay. I'm not mad at that. I just think that's, that's kind of a reality that comes with it. You just did. You just beat every team you played. And I think it also leads to the whole, what am I going to come back and accomplish? Like, we're, we're probably not going to do that again. So, and especially the way LSU just did it. It's not going to be what it was last year. So what better time to move on? I think they had a pretty good idea a lot of these guys were gone. The good news is that because of injuries on defense, a lot of guys played. Because of some injuries on the, on, on the offensive line, a lot of guys played. So you already know who some of those individuals are going to be that have to suit up and have to fill those roles and fill those voids. Now, you'd like some of them to come back from a leadership perspective, for chemistry, for guidance, but the blueprint's been laid of how Ed Ordron's going to build his program. There may be a down year or two, as far as not competing for the West or not winning 10 or 11 games. But that thing's not dropping down very far while he's going to be the head coach, as far as I'm concerned. All right, he is Cole Kublik. Does an outstanding job for the SEC Network, ESPN, Sirius XM Radio. Of course, they're in Birmingham as well. The man can do it all, Cole. We always appreciate the time. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. There he is, Cole Kublik.